You know not what it is like to be raised by a legend. I am a Patios of Crete. My father Alexandros raised me to be a warrior. And my mother taught me the strength of a keen mind. I tasted my first blood defending my siblings and fought alongside the Empire's greatest warriors. Tragedy has taken much from my family, but the strength of our convictions does not waver. I am my father's heir. I will live up to his legacy. Hello Wanderers, welcome to the Heir to Alexander CK3 roleplay series. For those of you who watched the first season, the Son of Ares series, you will be familiar with many of these characters. You don't have to have watched that in order to get enjoyment out of this one, but I would recommend it. So there will be a link to the playlist up above and down below in the description. Here we see Despot Hippotios. Despot Hippotios is the Hellenic ruler of the Kingdom of Crete, and he has very big shoes to fill. Very big shoes to fill indeed. Here is his father, Despot Alexandros the Honest of Crete. This man was a giant among men, possibly not in stature, but surely in grandeur and wonder. Indeed, he was a great ruler, a great man, and despite the trials and tribulations he faced later in life, he still went out as a lion here in the Eastern Roman Empire, conquering many lands, indeed conquering most of Southern Italy himself, including taking Sicily back from the Aglabids, and then further cementing his dynasty by forming not one, but two kingdoms here, the Kingdom of Crete and the Kingdom of Sicily. Now, the Kingdom is, of Sicily is ruled by our brother, Despot Bosporios, and we have generally good relations with him. And I think that that will play into the series a lot here, as we will be no doubt teaming up with our brother to spread the Hellenic faith here in the Mediterranean. Now, if you want to go back and watch that other series so you can see what happened here. I would definitely recommend it. There have been a lot of events that have happened with the deaths of our brothers, the general conquering of these lands. But to bring you up to speed, it has always been a goal of our family and of our father to bring the Hellenic holy sites into our, under our banner essentially. You can see that the five Hellenic holy sites here, Tunis, Vaticano, Servia, Athens, and Alexandria are all relatively close to our territory, but we don't hold any of them. On our father's deathbed, he had one goal. Well, he wasn't really on his deathbed. He was sailing south here from a tournament, I believe it was in Cephalonia, where he, he died on this ship. But it was one of his goals to take Tunis from the Aglabids, and we shall be following our father's footsteps and doing our best to achieve that goal. We have the means to do so. We have a strong alliance here with our brother, and we also have the formidable force of the Myrmidons, the holy order that our father raised in one of the last acts before his uh, untimely death. So Grandmaster Iulianios of the Myrmidons will no doubt play an influential role in our future successes. So we will, we will be dealing with that. It's only been, I believe, a few months since the death of our father, and we are going to make preparations to take Tunis in this next little while. We do have a court event here, so let's take a quick little look at that. I find my sister Ariadne sitting on the floor, surrounded by spilled paint and pieces of canvas for the third time this month. My courtiers whisper about her being an artistic genius in the making, but the servants complain about scrubbing the floors free of paint in the wake of her inspirations. 
Uh, I think that we will nurture our sister's artistic genius. We care for our siblings. We aren't the type of person who is essentially... We're not like a bad person. I mean, look at our traits here. Diligent, humble, gregarious. So obviously we do care about our family and we are generally outgoing. We don't really think too highly of ourselves. We're not an arrogant person and we are quite diligent as well. We are brilliant strategists. Our father trained us well. We know how to manage logistics. We're pretty good looking actually. I mean, look at that beard. That's a, and that handsome cut of a jaw. Indeed, the women definitely like us. We are shrewd, so we're very intelligent. Uh, scarred from battles in our youth. You'll remember, if you watch that first season, that Hippotios fought pirates here in the among the islands of Greece on his way back home from a journey, protecting his siblings and earning himself great honor at a very young age. I believe he was only 15 or so years of age, so he definitely proved himself in that regard. And then we are a warlike courtier, because we have been raised in a court that is a very warlike court. We've got good diplomacy, and that is, frankly, due to our wife, who is, uh, despite the fact that she's a naive appeaser, she has a lot of natural charm to her. You can see here, she is intelligent, she's patient, arrogant, generous, and just generally, she is a good woman and a good wife. We, we aren't necessarily deeply in love, but we definitely like each other quite a bit. She is Russian. She is the daughter or the, I believe, probably the aunt now. Yes, the aunt of the current king of Gardariki. So that's not an alliance that we have anymore, but it was still a very prestigious marriage at the time when she was the sister of the king of Gardariki. So we did get a prestigious marriage there. And, uh, you know, she's an attractive woman, so... I think that we will do well by our wife here and perhaps love will blossom that uh, remains to be seen but that is that is that we do have a daughter here princess valeria we haven't given her a proper name i'm going to leave that up to the comments if you have any good suggestions for a name for princess valeria let me know down below she did take after our good looks though so I'm sure we'll be able to fetch her a good match in the future. Let's take a look at our family here. Our sister, Queen Pelagia, is the wife of the current king of Moldavia, King Sudislav the Dunged of Moldavia. We don't have an alliance there, and he will not make an alliance with us, but that is fine. We don't really need it. Her twin brother, Prince Pontos of Crete, that event was quite sad. On a raid into the lands of Benevento, our, bro our young brother here was went with the army and was unfortunately slain by a dastardly man, Lothar von Falkenstein, who would escape justice despite the fact that we essentially raised Benevento to the ground in under our father's instructions and were able to essentially take a large chunk of it for ourselves, but we never did get vengeance on the man who killed our brother. That is unfortunate. Then, of course, you do see we have our younger brother, Despot Bosporios. He is a he's a just man. He's trusting. He's vengeful, but very skilled. He's a gray eminence, so he knows politics very well. He's comely, and he is scarred as well. He fought alongside us against those pirates when we were young. His wife, Despotisa Ioana, is the is quite a, a very good woman, in, in fact. She is intelligent. She is beautiful. She's got some good traits here. Forgiving, just lazy. I mean, you know, she's a despotisa. She can be a little bit lazy. They have one son here, Prince Iulanos, and he is he takes after the, the family good looks as well. So very, very good there. Interestingly enough here, we have our younger brother as well, Oracle Apollonios. He is, he is, he was raised essentially for a young, from a young age under the tutelage of Nasir, our father's previous or oracle, who died in Alexandria on a pilgrimage. And he has been raised to worship the Hellenic gods, Zeus, 
Apollo, Ares, Athena, and all of the others. And he is the religious leader now of our kingdom because he was raised to take that position. He's a pilgrim. He is a flagellant. He's humble, so that's a good trait. A bit gluttonous, but, you know, he's a priest, so he can probably get away with that. He is just and a mastermind philosopher. So, yeah, pretty good character all around. Then you see here our younger sister, who we got a brief glimpse of earlier there, Princess Ariadne. She is patient, just, craven, and she's uh, learning stewardship, so. She has a betrothal here between herself and Ladislav Stepanyak of the uh, Transcarpathian um, Lord here, High Chieftain Step Stepyan? Yepan? I don't know. You, you, somebody will correct me in the comments. So there is a good marriage there. Then another unfortunate accident. Prince Gabriel of Crete, our, our youngest brother, who died in a drowning accident at a very young age. He would have grown up to be a good man. He was brave, but uh, me, not, not a good swimmer, unfortunately. And then finally, our youngest sister, Princess Persephone. I think we probably have a, like a soft spot for Persephone. She's like the ugly duckling of the family. Everybody else is handsome and strong, uh, and she's just kind of ugly. But you know what? I think that we would still care about her, you know, despite, despite her looks. She is our younger sister. She's our youngest sister. We're going to take good care of her. She does have a, a betrothal between her and our uh, the Duke of our brother, Kemaladin Ibn Jafar. He was a Salamid man who was brought over to the Hellenic faith. His father here, Jafar Ibn Muhammad, who died of cancer. Anyways, you're basically caught up on all the important characters. I'm just going to show you one more here. Basileus Leon VI of the Byzantine Empire. He is the current Roman emperor following after his father, Basil I, who tons of history there. Definitely, I would suggest for you guys to go and look up Basil the First, or you can watch the original series, season one, to see all the events surrounding that. Very complicated relationship with our father had Basil the First, but now his son rules, and we will see how complicated our relationship with this new Roman Empire or Emperor is, and the Roman Empire as well. So there you go. That is basically filled in on kind of all the important people in this area. There's a lot of important characters all around here, but you'll get to see them as we kind of go along here. We're going to get time running because we have a game to play and a story to tell. What shall happen in that time? Well, we can hold court. We are building up and preparing our army here, so we have time to do this. Let's hold court here and gesture for the first in line to approach. Who is it? It is Mayor Boris of Rethymno. He is a eunuch man, a very beautiful man, but a eunuch, and he is the mayor of Rethymno. My lord, I regret to inform you that the religious situation in my lands is out of control. I've tried to make my subjects see the light of our true faith, but too many of them persist in their wrong beliefs. I beg you to use your authority and power to help me. Apollonius, see what you can do. Starts the Convert Faith in County Task in Hanya. And Mayor Boris, Boris gains 20 opinion. Yeah, let's make sure that we're doing that. We do want to convert Hanya to the Hellenic Faith. As soon as it is his turn to speak, the agitated man in front of me screams, The end is nigh! The signs are clear and everywhere. The people of the County of Chios know it all too well. Disorder, bandits, thieves, violence, and the disappearance of justice among men. The world as we know it is about to end. There is only one way for us to be saved. Renounce all vices, starting with the excesses of alcohol and food. Repent now, for the end is nigh. Okay, um, who are you? Timotheos, a giant of a man, and he is possessed by foul humors. Ah, uh, nonsense, burn this raving heretic. Take this fool out of my sight. Salvation must be achieved through every mean. Abstaining from wine. Um, I don't think we can give up wine. And this guy just bursts into our throne room, causing chaos, shouting about the end being nigh. Mm, I mean, we do get some piety here. 
I think that what would our you know what what would our brother say? Let's take this to our oracle, Apollonios here. Let's see what he would say. Humble, gluttonous, just what decision would he make on this man? I don't think that he he's gluttonous, so he's not giving up the wine. He's not vengeful or anything like that, so I don't think he would say we have to burn the man. I think he would probably say, get rid of this man. He knows not the will of the gods. So, good decision there by our brother Apollonios. My sister Ariadne comes to me. Oh, she's, she's come here probably to thank us for uh, letting her paint. Asking me to annul... Oh, never mind. Asking me to annul her betrothal to Ladislav, the son and heir of High Chieftain Stepan of Transcarpathia. He is a bad match, he is always so unrelenting, and he is unpleasant to boot. Please free me from this obligation, my lord. Ah, do we really care that much for this alliance with Transcarpathia? I don't know if we do. I mean, look at the man himself. He's a fornicator, reclusive. Ah, I mean, do we really care much for him? And, you know, our sisters, we have a soft spot for our sisters. Considering that we've had to, like, fight off pirates to save our family here. I'm pretty sure we care more about our family than some alliance that doesn't really mean much to us. Transcarpathia is far away. It's not even that helpful to us. Uh, I understand you are free of him. Yeah, you know what? I'm fine with that. There we go. You know what? I think that will be something that will come to play a little bit is just the the affection that we have for our family. Uh, family is important to us. So there we go. My business here is done. So that is that. We will take a look at now at our council. I know I said we were done with the characters, but uh, we have a few more to look at here. Just very briefly, our current chancellor here is Kaiserios. He is generally a patient, generous, and wrathful man. Uh, gray eminence, though, so pretty skilled. Very important character here, who I think will come into play a little bit in the series here. Alejandro Mendoza. Interesting character with an interesting story. He's actually a Basque man, and he has come to our court. Very skilled merchant, and, uh, and he has come here. We haven't really gotten his full story yet of why he came here, but he immediately converted to the Hellenic gods upon arriving in Crete, and through his wily ways and his ways with money, he has managed to gain the position of steward in our court. So we will see how that all plays out with him, but very skilled steward here. He is greedy, he is ambitious, uh, he is cynical, a Midas touch steward, and he's a traveler, traveling man, so. Uh, we, we'll, we will see what happens with Alejandro. Interesting to note that uh, the Basque lands are actually Ashari. So uh, King, King Eneko uh, of House Iniga is actually uh, indeed a Muslim ruler. So I, I don't know when that happened, but uh, that's kind of interesting. Our marshal is Tomislav Srednogorsky. Maybe I got that right. He's a Bulgarian man. You'll remember him from that previous series here. Ambitious, vengeful, brave. Uh, blade master, brilliant strategist, ugly as heck. But, you know, that is what it is. And then our spy master, Philaritos. Craven, sadistic, lustful. <laughs> Not a good man, but, uh, you know, he's at least relatively trustworthy in that position. Last but not least, I swear this is going to be the last character. I hope. Uh, Eric Bjornsson. Eric Bjornsson is a Norse man who came from far off Norway. In fact, his family rules up here in Haligaland. And his brother uh, is the current ruler there. He has traveled all the way south and has come to Crete, earned a place as our one of our most skilled warriors. And you can see that we have even give him, given him the accolade the Knight of the Bull, which was previously held by some pretty esteemed characters, such as uh, Duke Hectorios the Brave. So, very good man there. And we will see how things play out with Eric here. He will no doubt be an important part of our many strategies. 
strategies which are going to come into play right now because we are going to declare war on Sultan Ablarion the Merciful. I actually like this character. I like Sultan Ablarion. He is generous, he is temperate, he is forgiving. He's just a good man. Look at that. And he's a hunter. He is profligate, so just likes to he likes to share the wealth and he is very intelligent. Uh he's a good ruler. He lost the <laughs> you know, if you remember from season 1 he actually went up in battle against our father at a very young age. I think he was just like 16. He led his army to defend Sicily and was absolutely crushed by our father in one epic battle. And we'll see if this brings back some bad memories for him. He is incredibly in debt, which makes him ripe for the opportunity for us to take Tunis. I would like to conquer the duchy, but we do not have that option because we do not have enough prestige as of yet. Actually, we don't even have enough prestige, I think, to declare the war that we want here. We need 150, so we're going to have to build up a little bit of prestige. I don't think it's going to take very long at all, so we will let our armies raise. And actually, we do need to uh, get some more knights as well to, to get our cat cataphracts trained and ready for this battle, so... We'll let our prestige build up and we will prepare for this battle here. Now, one thing I would like to take a look at is any possible decisions such as divining the stars. That might be good. Let us see what the auspices hold for us in the future here. So we will divine the stars and see what the fates have in store for us. Hopefully, hopefully something good. I can only hope that that is the case. I've spent many nights looking up at the night sky, tracking the movements of the celestial bodies. Over time, I noticed a pattern, and after days of analysis, I am now confident in my prediction. The signs are clear. Hard work will lead me to a great fortune in the future. Oh, I wonder what else the future holds in store. So we are a dedicated worker, so our intrigue goes down, but our stewardship goes up. So, ah, eh, that's not too bad. We're not really an intrigue character, so I don't think it's too important to have that. We do have a successor to the Knight of the Bull. Who is this? Trifon Solomon. Oh, I like your name. Trifon Solomon. For some reason, he only has two traits, brave and calm. Uh, nothing wrong with that, I suppose. Skilled tactician, unyielding defender. Not particularly skilled as a warrior, but he's got a lot of uh, battle sense, so we will put him in that position there make him the successor to the Knight of the Bull. There we go. Hopefully he will prove himself worthy of that uh, esteemed title. We shall see. We shall see indeed. Oh, look at our brother. He's got quite the beard on him. Yeah, all right. He's got like an Abe Lincoln thing going on there. Not too bad, brother. Wonder if our other younger brother here is going to get himself a beard as well. Beards run in the family. I mean, look at our father. He had pretty awesome beard himself. Is there any way we can get prestige? I mean, probably through events, but... The foxes of Agios and Nicolaos. My courtier, Kinana, known for his interest in venery, brings rumors of beasts spotted in my realm. I'm hearing much talk from the county of Heraklion. It is said there are excellent prospects for hunting thereabouts, with many a worthy fox seen roaming in the mountains. Interesting. We could go hunting. Uh, let us take a look here. But it's going to cost us a lot of money, and we don't make very much money. That's something that we're going to have to fix, is how much money we are making. Because 0 0.07, that is not going to, that's not going to do. Uh, what I would like to do is buy, uh, potentially make money by raiding, but first we're going to need to get the county here in North Africa because we can only raid in places... We can't raid overseas. We can only raid over land, and we're on an island, so there isn't a lot of raiding prospects. So Once we get Tunis, we'll be able to raid places like Pamin and the Rustamids, We'll be able to go and raid all of them. There are some pretty powerful factions around here, like Tripoli is quite strong. Uh, Mazab, pretty strong as well. 
Um, but we'll probably be able to raid like this, uh, the Algerian re region. I believe that's the Algerian region, right? To make my courtier Theocarist more susceptible to my attempts at approaching her. Why are we swaying this person? Um, I don't even know why we're trying to sway this person. Uh, this might have been something that the character was doing when he was an independent ruler. We'll keep it short and professional. Loyalty and honor. Sure, let's let's try that. We'll let this sway fill out, and then we're probably going to sway somebody a little bit more important, like, say, the Basileus. There we go. She seems to enjoy that. Well, you know what? Good, uh, because we're done with you. Uh, let us try to sway the Basileus. I really would like to keep him on our side. So we're going to sway him. There we go. We want to keep good relations with the Emperor for now because we are very, in a very precarious position. Despite our alliance with our brother, we are still going to face some difficulty due to the fact that we are just two Hellenic rulers in a majority Orthodox Empire and then surrounded by religious enemies on essentially all sides. So we need to keep the Emperor happy for now. We don't have the power to go up against him or, or anything like that. So we need to do what we can to keep the Emperor happy. It's not that we're entirely disliked that badly by a lot of the lords here. Uh, you can see like they don't hate us despite our religion. It's kind of a mixture here. The women tend to like us uh, partially because of our prize ring, but... Oh, the Athenians coming after our brother, Duke Antonios. Ah, how Scleros has been an enemy of us for quite some time. Well, oh, he's got some allies. Damn. All right, brother, we're we are definitely going to accept and come to a, come to the aid of our brother. I like this, though. If Athens is attacking our brother, trying to take Calabria, well, then who's to say that we couldn't invade Athens and take that holy site for ourselves? Get a little revenge. You know, why not? Can we raise the holy order? Yeah, we can. Look at that. All right. So huh, you're going down, Duke Scleros. Let's raise our armies. Yeah, there we go. So battle. Battle is starting off uh, pretty early, actually. Let's gather up here, bring our forces together. We are obviously going to lead the army here. And we will head, uh, we're gonna head over and join the battle here. Um, and then we'll probably go and siege Athens itself, honestly. Oh wait, where are you going? Are you running? Uh, uh, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna get onto our ships. We'll see where the Athenians are landing and then we'll probably just try to face their army in battle and crush them, crush them at one time. Yeah, looks like they're going to head here. All right. I'm fine with meeting the Athenians in battle here, right in Salerno. Even if we're just getting off the ships. I mean, they're recently disembarked too, so... Oh, and the Emperor wants to name us the Marshal of the Empire. I'm going to take that any day of the week. That's going to give us some huge boons. So obviously this is partially due to the influence of our father and the recognition of our dynasty as being one of the greatest warlike dynasties, essentially, in the Empire. So that's going to give us an extra bit of prowess. Army gold maintenance minus 20%. Levy size plus 20%. And monthly martial lifestyle experience. Big boons here. And that is going to help us, help us out a lot. I think we also get paid for that. Uh... I believe, maybe, maybe not. Either way, I've, it's still uh, pretty good to have, so. Here we are, we're going to engage them in battle. Uh, but first, this event, I am visiting some peasants to see how things are going on in the realm. There's a nip in the air, cold won't be good for my crops. Don't worry, things will be fine. Pray to Zeus that nothing happens. Indeed, pray to Zeus that your crops will grow well. Here we go. We're going to engage them about coming off of our ships and going up against Duke Antonios of Athens himself. Well, Duke Antonios, I suspect that you will rue the day 
that you went up directly against the Argeus dynasty. And look at this, smashing his army. He stands no chance here. He's gonna run, but where are you gonna run to? Probably over this way, I imagine. I think that's the only place that he can run. Somebody's trying to steal from me, steal the artifact from me. Who would be doing that? Probably one of my siblings, honestly. I wouldn't be entirely surprised if it was Bosporios. He does want some of our father's artifacts. He didn't really get a lot in the inheritance. We might forgive him for that uh, if if the case comes to that. Uh, we will see. Depends, depends how it all plays out. But first, we need to crush the Athenian army. I don't think they're going to stand much chance. The Ecumenical Patriarch is coming here to... To try, try to woo us over to Orthodox. Um, he has proven himself a reliable and forthright man. All right, the event says that he is only has our best interests so far. You know what? We will we'll become friends with him, but I don't think that this will necessarily mean we're going to convert. Maybe we'll convert him. Maybe we'll get the Ecumenical Patriarch to be a little bit kinder to the Hellenic people. Oh, I think we're gonna... Oh yeah, the Athenians. Oh, you poor Athenian bastards. You are going to get crushed here. Antonios, twice? Do we need to crush you twice? And look at that, annihilated his army. Not a single man left. And our brother's army, unfortunately, was defeated here by the forces of uh, our maniac. Well, brother, uh, I hate to say it, but we're going to have to go and clean up your messes. Here we go. I would like to take Bellum Justum, reduce that Castus Belli cost, because that's going to be helpful. Take a look at the details from those two battles before we get into this. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well. Uh, you know what? I really, I really should have uh, marked my my brother as not being in the army. Uh, you know what? This was just a mistake on my part, but uh, we're gonna roll with it because because of this reason, <laughs> we've lost two of our brothers already. Two unfortunate accidents. In that, in the end of the first season, our dynasty was essentially, uh, it seemed as though a curse was affecting us. And we lost two of our brothers in sh short succession. And our, our father tried everything he could to try to like end that curse, to bring the gods back on our sides. And now our brother dies. The way I see it is happening. It's not that our brother was fighting in the battle. Um, I think we brought him along in order to bring the blessings of the gods to our, to our army. And then he unfortunately was slain. Perhaps some, while we were out at battle, some invaders came in and attacked the camp and he was slain in the camp or maybe a stray arrow during the battle when he came to bless the troops. <laughs> I should have I should have marked him as not being in the battle, but I I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this because it fits the story that has been happening so far, where we've lost so many of our brothers, like every one of our brothers dropping one by one. Is that going to happen with our other brother as well? I mean, will Bosporios even survive? Who's to say? I mean, at this point, we've lost so many of our family members. I'm choked about that. I kind of, I, I liked him. I liked Apollonius, but you know what? It fits with the story. We're going to roll with it. Is there anybody, should, is there anybody I need to block off from being a, a knight here at the moment? Uh, let me just quickly check. Alejandro, yeah, we're going to forbid you for sure. Um, yeah, all right. I think, I think we're okay, but huh. Choked. I, I'm i choked about that. The death of our brother. That is, that is truly unfortunate. And I think the death of our brother there has turned, turned Bosporios to the drink. I mean, they were actually friends. Um, 
And like, we have close ties with our family. We lost another brother. Oh my God. I can't believe it. The, the fate that is facing the Arges family is just, it is truly, it is truly wretched. Uh, I think we should probably be able to win this battle. I'm not too, I'm not too worried about it here. Uh, maybe if our brother was in the army, I'd be a little bit worried, but. My paths have crossed with Mayor Akakios, and to my surprise, it seems as though he does not have a great impression of my friend Duke Hectorios. Perhaps I should take the opportunity to change his mind. Let me tell you a story about Hectorios. Indeed, Hectorios, great warrior, fought with our father, earned himself a position as a duke from just a, a lowly knight, a nobleman here, and uh, let us tell him the story there. And we approve, improve Akakios' opinion of our brothers, so good, good to know. We're gonna chase this army down and hopefully catch them here. Indeed, it looks, oh, they're defending in the hills. You know what, let's uh, let's let our brother's army arrive here. We might as well get the assistance and try to, try to make sure that we can, oh, you're gonna try to flee? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna let you. All right, we're gonna engage them. We have the advantage in the numbers, and we are a very skilled commander. I think that we should be able to win this one. A ruler in the making. There is no end to the opinions and wants of my daughter and heir, Valeria. Half of the time, she's trying to tell me what to do instead of the other way around. She gains the trait bossy. Well, you know what? She's taken after her family, who are very, very independent-minded people. All right, let's crush this army here. And there we go. They have gone down. They're going to retreat. We're going to follow them and smash their army again once as once again here. Still choked about our brother's death. I mean, uh, he was a cool character. I made him even I, I even made him look really cool. Who's our current Theocariste? Uh, you're not even that good at your job. You know what? We're going to put our mother in charge of uh, being our Sybil. Ooh, cool. I like that title, though. Our mother is a very well-learned woman and thought to be a witch at one point. But you can see here she's a herbalist. She's a physician. She gets drunk, but, you know, she is 51 and she's lost a lot of her children. Don't blame her, guys. Like, come on now. Uh, but she she knows religion, and so I think that she... Oh, look at this. Two years left, and she's going to have Anya converted. That's actually where she is from. Our father actually uh, found her in the prisons of Emir Shu'eb and rescued her from there. They fell in love, and uh, so it makes sense that she would be able to convert Anya because she is from Anya. Very good. Huh. Our mother endorses us. I'm glad. I mean... I'm not surprised, but I'm glad. Uh, so here we are. We're going to chase these armies down. Get revenge. Oh, for, you know what? The freaking Athenians. We need to deal with those Athenian bastards for what they did. Killing our brother. I can't believe it. All right. Let's catch these armies here. Oh, yeah. They're going to try to run. But I think that we are going to get them. And I think that we are going to crush them. All right, here we go, Scleros. All right, look at this, their army. Easily defeated here, handily defeated here. Nice, successor of the Bull gains the stalwart attribute. There we go. Huh. And so... So it is that our good warrior here, Eric Bjorn, your son Bjornsson here. Eric Bjornsson was slain in battle. Uh, a short end to a character that we had set up here. A berserker, even. Uh, that is terribly unfortunate. But we do have his son, Hrodolf, here in the court. So despite the loss of Eric, we are going to raise his son here uh, to be a... Uh, yeah, like a good Hellenic warrior. You know what? Yeah, let's uh, let's raise him to be to be a good Hellenic warrior. I think he might actually already be. Kaiserios is, is teaching him, so. But we should probably teach him to be a warrior, I think. Indeed. Let's find you. Remove your guardian. Let's pick a guardian for you who will train you in the ways of war. I mean, we could use a squire. You know what? We're going to raise him ourselves. 
Convert culture, convert faith. Let's raise young Eric here. His father fought well for us in those in those battles. So Allied combatants slain. Yeah, there we go. So that was sad. Jeez. <laughs> Early on in this, and we're already losing like important named characters in this story. Let's look at the events of that battle. Yeah. <laughs> Eric became a berserker, but then unfortunately died. Eustratius was wounded, and we captured a bunch of their guys. Let's take a look at this one here. Uh, we captured Photios in this battle. Uh, yeah, Bjornsson was slain by an enemy soldier. Tomislav slew a Narcis, and he slew a Megistos. We captured, oh, look at all these guys. Our prison must be full. Oh man, I can't believe this. And then here in this battle, more, yeah, just, they have so, they've got, Let's just take a look <laughs> at our uh, prison here. 12 prisoners here. Dang, we could get a lot. I mean, we could get a lot of money probably. Uh, we could ransom three of them only. You know what? Let's ransom the ones that we can get that money because we're probably going to need it. We did annihilate their army there, so that part is good at least. Should we sail over into Athens and siege down Athens? Yeah, why not? Those damn Athenians. So we we got some money. That's going to be helpful in the future here. But uh, the Athenians are coming back. I'm hoping that our brother will be able to defend his lands from them. I think that he should be okay uh, while we siege down Athens here. I don't think we're going to have too much trouble with that. If I have somebody who's got good siege, I'll probably put them in charge. Doesn't appear that we do, so we'll lead the siege ourselves. All right, so we just have to hope that our brother can hold on while Salerno is being sieged here, and we siege down Athens, so we'll see who is first. If it looks like it's going badly, we might have to just go in and defeat the Athenian army once again, because if they capture Salerno, things could go badly. Where's our brother? Is he actually with the army what are you doing in germany uh attending a feast or something like what are you doing way up there all right well have fun while your lands get sieged brother like i don't entirely know what you're trying to achieve there our brother maybe isn't the best of rulers maybe he isn't you know fit to rule sicily i mean that's a, that's a good question. Ooh, okay. All right. So sieges are relatively even, but I think if we take Athens, we'll probably get enough here to to win the win the war. Ah, look. Okay, they're moving. Good. That's going to give us just enough time. Oh yeah, there we go. We took it. Athens is captured and there we go. So, I mean, <laughs> Brother, Basporius, like, we had to do all of that ourselves. Saved your bacon there by winning that war. And there we go. So, uh, Scleros here loses the claim on the Duchy of Calabria. He pays a lot of money to our brother, which, honestly, some of that should probably go to us or most of it here. Uh, allies share some prestige and blah, 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 blah. All right, brother, you owe us for that one. You owe us a uh, big time. We're going to have to let our forces build back up here so that we can go to war with the Aglabids, who are still in a position where we can probably defeat them. Oh, who's his? All right, he doesn't have any strong allies, so I'm still pretty confident that we can win that. Uh, oh, we could host a grand tournament. We are not going to. I would like to keep my money for now we're probably going to use it in a lot of different ways but for now i do want to keep that money how's our brother doing his forces are okay he's got the money now all right brother you owe us assist us in this war here we are going to take tunis we're going to take that holy site despite the fact that we just finished off this war we are going to follow up with another war our armies are wedded on the blood of our enemies and they are ready to fight. Let us fight then. 
We'll raise up the Holy Order once again. This Holy Order is going to come. Oh, this is going to make such a big difference. Because we have only this tiny little island, we're essentially doubling our forces by having this Holy Order that we can call up to aid us here. Massive, massive boon. Uh, and that's going to probably give us what we need to, to win here. So uh, we're going to call in our brother here. Let us see. Da, da, da. Uh, we need a successor for the Knight of the Bull. Let us seek a worthy successor for that accolade after Eric's unfortunate death. And we can restore an accolade. Uh, I'm not going to do that just yet. But what I wanted to do... Call my brother in to the war. There we go. And that's not going to work out. All right, everything is good. We'll call our brother in. At least we can use his forces to to assist us here taking Tunis. Like I said, he owes us one. I think <laughs> I think that's pretty clear that our brother owes us pretty big for essentially helping save his kingdom there. King Sigurder likes us a little bit better. Excellent. It has come to my attention that some local commoners are moving to Byzantia in the capital of my liege, Basileus of Lyon. Locals newly settled or not praising me can surely do no harm to his perception of me. Well, you know. Now nah, we don't need to we don't need to spend extra money on that. We'll win the Basileus over by the skill of our wife and her very able uh capabilities in that regard. Alright, here we go. So we've got our armies here. Uh Pretty close together, so... Oh, no. Mental break, growing needs. Every day seems to slip away from me recently. A never-ending train of greedy petitioners and difficult decisions. My chest tightens as another steps forward. My fingers itch and tingle at the tips. My eyes feel too small for my skull. I need to get away from this just for a little while. I need to talk to someone, anyone. Really talk and feel like they understand me. Is it so much to ask? Maybe a new bed or three, so we could gain the trait profligate. We could become a drunker, or we could become melancholic. I actually like the idea. I mean, melancholic's not good, but I kind of feel like that one makes the most sense. Considering everything that's happened to our family, I think it would be understandable to become a little bit melancholy, a little bit sad. Yeah, totally understandable here. I'm going to take Engineered for Destruction, considering we're, in, like, right now, we are in the middle of a siege. So, yeah, let's uh, let's take Engineered for Destruction. That's going to be a lot of help here when we're sieging down Tunis. Once that is done, we're going to head straight for their capital. Oh, who is this man? Hellenic Baranis man. Akli Najidid. Oh, okay. 12, 4... You're not really that good, but technically you are a successor to the accolade. We'll put you in that position, but you better, you know, you better show your... No, he you can't even be put in that position. He does not serve us as a knight, right? So he, he's not even good enough to be a knight. Well, then you're not a good enough to be a successor to that accolade. Yeah, that is... That is unfortunate. Oh, the Basileus didn't accept our attempt to sway him, so be it. There we go, our brother's force is heading in for the capital, perfect. And there we go, we've taken Tunis. Where are their armies? They're not sieging us, are they? No. Where are you? Alright, well, let's help our brother siege down Tunis here. Gather up all of our armies, this should give us plenty of siege weapons to conquer. Oh, there, there's his army, right? Yeah, all right. We're going to siege down their capital, and then we're going to go and engage them in a fight. Pretty sure that we will win that fight handily, but we shall certainly see if that is the case here. We might even capture, like, some important prisoners here. He has a lot of children, and we might be able to capture a few of them. No, brother. All right, we're gonna go in. Let's take the. Let's take his armor. Oh, he can't even run fast enough. All right, all right. Uh, Sultan Ablarion, you faced our father in battle once before, and you were utterly crushed. That was many years ago, almost a decade. 
Can you fare any better against the son of the man who defeated you all those years ago? I sincerely doubt it here. <sighs> Hectorios was slain! Oh my gosh, this is a crazy first episode, you guys. So many important characters here are dying. Characters from that last season are just not making it out of this. I mean, he was 42. Great warrior. His sons now rule. He, at least he had some he had some sons. Uh you'll you'll remember that uh his lineage actually also descends from Nicoletta, who was the daughter of Gabriel, who was our father's most trusted warrior, and who helped him conquer Crete from uh, the Emir Shu'aib. So that lineage is going to continue on through Duke Trifon here, but damn, Hectorios died too. And, and he was one of our friends. We're gonna have to do something about this stress. Here. Ah, there we go. Enemy combatants captured. Yeah, all right. We captured Prince Khalil. And, and the war here is is done well emir or sultan ablarion he and look at that you know what let's look at this battle here details of that absolutely annihilated his army no survivors uh we captured a ton of them slew even more let's look at the events here komitas slew sheikh yukana ibn gabriel he slew wali jerjer ibn dawat obviously we lost victorious there we captured a bunch of them once again, Ablarin, you just cannot face us in battle. That's unfortunate for you because we have good reason to want the rest of these lands. So we are going to enforce our demands. And then look at this. Tunis is now ours. And look at that. That is a beautiful sight to see. The holy site of Tunis here. Controlled by Hellenism. Natural dread plus five. Ah, that's not a terrible little bonus there. But there we go. I mean, it's going to be difficult to keep this little bit of land. I mean, it's surrounded by enemies, but consider this. It obviously gives us strong control over the Sicilian Narrows, which is an important trade route from uh, the lands of Andalusia, uh, West Francia, Italy, all of these places, you know, coming through the Strait of Gibraltar here. They all have to travel through this to get to the Roman Empire. I'm pretty sure the, the Emperor would be pretty happy to know that he now controls the Sicilian Strait here through the through his vassals. Uh, despite the fact that we're Hellenic, we are doing a pretty good job of that. But that is not the end of our conquest, and that is not the end of our story. We will be continuing it on in the next episode. Until then, thank you for watching.